Are you open to eternal life, or do you reject that language? Notice that life is what forms the various bodies, small and large. Life guides the transformation of one bodily form into another, such as a caterpillar into a butterfly, or a baby into a full-grown adult, or a seed into a tree. My prophet Jesus taught about a mustard seed which can only grow into a mustard tree. Within every branch of the mustard tree, life is present. The tree is within every branch. The life of the tree is within every branch. Life is within every vine and every tree and every body. In fact, there is no mustard tree independent of life. And also, there is no living body independent of life. Before a particular mustard tree is formed by life, life is present. Before a new species of plant or animal is first formed by life, life is present. Each organism or body has no life except for the life that was already present before the forming of that temporary form by life. Further, during and after any particular form, such as a two-foot-tall body or a four-foot-tall body, life is still present, for life itself is eternal. You may identify yourself as merely a temporary mortal form. That is an innocent mistake which can be labeled a sin. Labels are just categories in language, so relax. You're already the eternal life that forms bodies and species and categories and symbolic code words and language and perception. Using language, you may identify yourself as a temporary mortal form, a specific organism. You could say words such as, I am only a caterpillar. I'm only a caterpillar, so when the butterfly is born, I will die. You could say any words you say. The particular mortal form of caterpillar or butterfly or two foot tall or uh, fruit, those are just particular mortal forms. They come, they go. The identification with a particular moral form must end for the presence of eternal life to be experienced. Note that there is no special method for ending the activity of identifying with a particular mortal form, which is merely a spoken phrase in language. How do you stop waving your hand? You just don't wave your hand. How do you stop identifying um, with a particular mortal form in language? Well, <laughs> you could say nothing. Be silent. How does life stop saying, I am only a particular mortal form? How does life stop saying, I am only a particular mortal form? Say nothing at all. Let me repeat that. How does life stop saying, I'm only a particular mortal form? Well, if I keep repeating it, then I'm not stopping saying it. How does life stop saying, I'm only a particular mortal form? Say nothing at all. Say anything else. <laughs> if you recognize that the words are just words, then even saying, I'm only a particular mortal form, has no particular importance. Similar to saying, I am isolated in that tree over there. Or, I was once a small baby in a past life, but that baby has died, and now I am six years old. I am a big boy now. I wasn't a big boy before. Before I was a baby. Now I'm a big boy, and soon the six-year-old will die, and a seven-year-old will begin, replacing the dead six-year-old. That's the kind of stuff someone could say. I could say that. You could say that. I'm only a particular mortal form. How do you stop saying, I'm only a particular mortal form? Let me ask that question again. How do you stop saying, I'm only a particular mortal form? Well, if you keep saying it, or if I keep saying it, then I'm saying it. 
And if I don't say it, then I'm not saying it. Be reborn now as eternal life. Or instead remain as life identifying itself as a specific mortal form. Perhaps struggling to rejoin a distant god, or earn a way into a distant heaven, such as by good works, compensatory acts, or to escape, uh, the, you know, how about earning a way into a distant heaven to escape from a hell of eternal punishment, which you may claim to deserve for an original sin that you plagiarized without permission from someone who may have told you that this particular sin is both unforgivable yet already forgiven by the mercy of God. Sometimes God's branches say some very, very funny things. And sometimes it takes a long time for some of God's branches to get the humor and irony. You can never earn forgiveness, such as by good works or by saying prayers. Forgive others, and you're forgiven. That's not earning forgiveness. Just stop condemning others, and you stop condemning yourself. You can only claim to be condemned, or stop claiming to be condemned. You're not a particular body of a baby, or a particular body of an adult. You are the eternal life, which formed those temporary forms. Which forms those temporary forms, transforms them. After those forms, life is eternal and present. Before those forms, life is eternal and present. During those forms, life is eternal and present. Before those forms were formed, eternal life is present. As those bodies form and transform, eternal life is present. When those particular bodies are only ancient fossils or little skeletal remains or piles of ashes or uh, whatever, eternal life is present. Eternal life is like a tree which grows many branches, and each branch grows many fruits season after season. More and more fruits form and then die and then form again next season, right? The body of a particular fruit forms and then falls from the tree and decays. And then another season comes and perhaps a, uh, a new piece of fruit forms. Looks a lot like the other ones from previous years and on the other branches that same year. Each a little bit different, all quite similar. The tree forms fruits, the fruits fall from the tree and decay. When a piece of fruit falls from the tree of eternal life, does that kill the branch that it fell off of? Or does it kill the whole tree of eternal life? Life just, just forms trees, and trees just form fruit. That's what, that's what it does. That's what's going on. When a body forms in a human womb, and that body is born or delivered, and the, and the cord is broken from the body of the mother, to the body of the infant. Well, what happens to the life of the infant? What happens to the life of the mother? Well, life's present before and after the instant of the breaking of the cord, right? What ends when the connection of the cord ends? Only the connection of the cord ends. Does the cord die? Well, you, could, you could say that. Did the cord ever live? We could say that. Looks like you could talk about a piece of hair that's alive, a uh, fingernail that's you know been clipped off of the of the body, or a fingernail that's still growing, fruit that's still dangling from a tree. Uh, however, life, eternal life, branches through all forms, all the time. The whole thing about a tree and fruit, that's just a metaphor. It's to give you a kind of a general idea of how eternal life lives through all of the forms.